If you're wondering which laptops for architecture are worth your money, stick around. After we run through each product, I'll give you my personal take. Would I buy it or would I skip it? No fluff, just my honest opinion. Let's get into it. Asus ExpertBook P5 P5045. This thing is so light you might need to tether it to your desk. And with its marathon battery life, you could probably design an entire city before it needs a charge. But if you actually try to render that city, its processor gets so wheezy you'll have time to go get coffee, come back, and it will still be chugging along with its sad rendering scores. Would I buy it? Maybe, if my job was mostly 2D drafting and I had the patience of a saint for rendering. HP ZBook Power G11A. This laptop is built tougher than a $2 steak with its military-grade certification, and the NVIDIA RTX A1000 graphics card will power through your 3D models without even breaking a sweat. The only buzzkill is the pretty basic full high-definition screen. It's like putting a supercar engine in a minivan. It gets the job done, but it's not a thrilling view. Would I buy it? Yes, if I needed a reliable workhorse for pure modeling power, and I'm clumsy enough to need that rugged build. HP Omnibook Ultra Flip 14. You can bend this thing over backwards like a gymnast, which is awesome for sketching ideas. And its 2.8K organic light emitting Ballard display is so stunning, it makes even your roughest drafts look like they belong in a museum. Just don't ask it to do any heavy lifting with 3D renders because its integrated graphics will throw a tantrum and quit faster than a reality TV star. Would I buy it? No, this feels more like a flashy gadget for presenting the clients than a serious machine for getting complex architectural work done. Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. This absolute beast of a gaming laptop will chew through demanding architecture software like Revit and V-Ray so fast you'll wonder if it's powered by black magic, all thanks to that insane Core i9 processor and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 490 graphics card. Of course, all that power means the cooling fans can get loud enough to simulate a wind tunnel, which could be a handy way to drown out annoying coworkers. Would I buy it? Yes, without a doubt. This thing is a monster that will handle pretty much any architectural task you can throw at it. MSI Titan 18HX. This is less of a laptop and more of a portable supercomputer that probably has its own weather system. But my god, that massive 18-inch 4K mini light emitting diode display is so crisp it will ruin all other screens for you. It packs the same ridiculously powerful internals as the Legion, making it a true desktop replacement, but it's so huge you'll need a bigger backpack and probably a gym membership to haul it around. Would I buy it? No, because I value my spine and I don't own a desk big enough to land a helicopter on. Microsoft Surface Studio 2. This thing has a cool folding screen that's great for showing off your designs to clients, and it packs a decent punch with an Intel Core i7-13700H and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 graphics card. But honestly, it costs a fortune, the battery life is a joke, and you could probably get a more powerful machine for way less money, assuming your critical rendering software even runs on it. Would I buy it? Maybe, if a client's paying for it and I want to look fancy, but for my own money, it's a hard pass. Asus ROG Zephyrus G16 2025 Okay, this laptop is an absolute monster for rendering, rocking a new Intel Core Ultra 9 processor and up to an NVIDIA RTX 50 series graphics card, all while being surprisingly thin and light for something this powerful. The downside is, it screams, I play video games 12 hours a day, with its gamer aesthetic and soldered memory that you can never upgrade. Would I buy it? Yes, if I need pure, unadulterated power to render massive projects and don't mind my laptop looking like it's about to launch into space. Dell Precision 5690. This is a true professional workstation, packing an Intel Core Ultra processor and up to a ridiculously powerful NVIDIA RTX 5000 Ada Generation graphics card, all in a surprisingly portable body. However, it costs so much you might have to sell a kidney to afford it, and with its limited ports, you'll be living the dongle life which is nobody's idea of a good time. Would I buy it? No unless my company has an unlimited budget and a strange obsession with making me carry around a bag full of adapters. Lenovo Legion i Gen 9. This beast comes with an Intel Core i9-14900HX processor, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090, and its own damn liquid cooling system, so it can handle your heaviest rendering tasks without breaking a sweat. The catch is that it weighs over 5.5 pounds and costs more than my first car, 
so you're basically buying a portable desktop that doubles as a dumbbell. Would I buy it? Yes, if I needed to render an entire city block in 10 minutes and wanted to skip arm day at the gym. Asus Pro Art P16 2025. This machine is a fantastic middle ground. Designed for creators with a gorgeous 4K OLED touchscreen, a powerful AMD Ryzen AI9HX370 processor, and a beefy NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 graphics card. It does get a bit hot and loud when you push it, and Asus cheaped out by not including a stylus for the touchscreen, which is just insulting. Would I buy it? Yes. This is probably the smartest choice here, giving you an amazing screen and pro-level power without the ridiculous gamer design or the soul-crushing price of a high-end workstation. Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13. This thing is so light and sleek, it feels like it might float away. And the battery lasts for what feels like an eternity, which is great for crying over your renders at 3 a.m. without being chained to a wall. But trying to run complex architectural software on its integrated graphics, it's like trying to tow a boat with a unicycle. It's got the spirit, but not the muscle. And the price for the pretty OLED screen will make your wallet weep. Would I buy it? Maybe, if my architecture work was mostly drawing stick figures in Microsoft Paint and I just won the lottery. Dell XPS 16 9640. This laptop is stacked with a Core Ultra 9 processor and an NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU, making it an absolute monster for 3D rendering and those ridiculously large project files you pretend to understand. It also packs a battery that's just barely legal to take on a plane, which feels like you're getting away with something. However, for all that power, it can get hotter than a dragon sneeze, and the fans apparently scream like a banshee, so your coworkers will definitely know when you're pushing a deadline. Would I buy it? Yes, because I believe in the work hard, deafen your colleagues philosophy, and this machine has the power to back it up. Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 5. Here we have a proper little workstation that packs a punch with a Core Ultra 9 option and an NVIDIA RTX 500 ADA GPU. And get this, you can actually upgrade the RAM yourself. That's right, no soldered on garbage. You can pop the back off and give it more memory like a civilized human being. Plus the fans stay quiet even when it's working hard. The only bummer is there's no OLED screen option, so you're stuck with regular, non-eyeball melting IPS displays, which is a real world first problem. Would I buy it? Yes, the upgradable RAM and quiet performance make it a sensible choice, even if the screen won't burn my retinas with its beauty. HP EliteBook Ultra G1Q. This laptop is so light and has such a ridiculously long battery life, you could probably use it to build a digital replica of the pyramids from an actual pyramid without needing a charger. It's running on a Snapdragon ARM chip, which is all new and futuristic with its AI magic, but here's the kicker. Your essential architecture software probably won't run on it, so it's like buying a Ferrari when all the roads are made of water. It looks cool, but it's completely useless for what you need. Would I buy it? No, unless my job as an architect suddenly changes to professional email sender and web browser. HP ZBook Fury 16G11. This thing isn't a laptop, it's a mobile god of thunder, packed with a 20-core processor and a professional NVIDIA GPU that will chew through your most demanding renders without breaking a sweat. You can cram up to 128 gigabytes of RAM into this beast, which is more memory than an elephant with a grudge. The only downside is that it comes preloaded with so much HP bloatware it feels like you're evicting a dozen squatters, and it's so heavy you'll develop a hunchback carrying it to Starbucks. Would I buy it? Yes, because I'm willing to trade my spinal health and an hour of my life cleaning out junk for this much raw, unadulterated power. Dell Pro 16 Plus PB16250 This thing is called Pro, but with its integrated Intel graphics, it's about as pro as a kid's lemonade stand. Sure, the screen has a nice 120Hz refresh rate and the build quality is solid, but trying to render a detailed architectural model on this will feel like trying to mine Bitcoin with the potato. You'll be waiting until the next ice age. Would I buy it? No, because calling this a pro laptop for architecture is a bigger stretch than my last yoga class. HP Dragonfly Folio G3. So HP made a laptop that folds like a fancy leather-bound transformer, which is cool for sketching ideas in front of a client to look all artsy. 
The problem is, it costs a king's ransom and is running on hardware from what feels like the Stone Age, so when you actually need to work, that integrated Iris XE graphics will probably just give up and go home. Would I buy it? No, I'm an architect, not an oil baron, and I need a laptop that can do more than just look pretty in a meeting. Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 7. All right, if you've got money to burn and clients to impress, this is your weapon of choice. It's a legit mobile workstation that can handle heavy-duty 3D modeling and rendering without breaking a sweat. It's built tougher than a $2 steak and has all the ports you could ever want. But be ready for the fan to sound like a jet engine taking off when you put it to work, and the price will make your wallet weep. Would I buy it? Yes, if my boss was paying, because this beast will render a skyscraper faster than I can make a cup of coffee. HP Omnibook 7 Flip. This laptop is all about that new, efficient processor, which basically means it has great battery life, but the multi-core performance needed for rendering is kind of meh. It flips around in four different modes, which is great for showing off, but when you're staring at a render bar that hasn't moved in an hour, you'll wish it would just flip itself into the trash. Would I buy it? Maybe if my job was 90% presenting and 10% actual work, but for serious architectural rendering, it's just not packing the heat. Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. This machine is the dark horse, the sleeper agent. It looks like a sleek content creator's laptop, but you can shove an NVIDIA RTX 4070 and a killer Intel Core Ultra 9 processor in there. That gorgeous 3.2K mini LED screen will make your designs look so good you'll want to lick them, and it'll chew through intensive tasks without the I'm a boring corporate machine vibe of the ThinkPad. Would I buy it? Yes, this is the perfect middle finger to overpriced workstations. It's got the power, the looks, and doesn't cost as much as a small car. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you pick the laptops for architecture for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description.